He led an army of 10,000 people and departed towards Mecca. After all these preparations, he told Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an that I am going to attack Mecca. But other people, from them he kept it a secret. And in one narration it is said that also the Prophet himself told Homer very secretly that we are going to Mecca. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sent before him some Jawasis, the informer. What? Informer. The informer. To keep an eye on any strange person you see on our way towards Mecca. And that was to attack Mecca when people do not know that he is coming. In Medina, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he appointed Abu Raham, Kulsum ibn Hussein Ghifari, as Amir. Because that was the capital. When the president is going out, so automatically the vice president take over. Got it? That is the case. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was appointing someone when he was going out of Medina. On a mission. This man Abu Raham, he accepted Islam and Prophet وسلم, came to Medina. In Uhud, an arrow was hit into his throat. His throat was almost cut, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala healed him. That's why he was called as Manhur. Manhur means the slaughtered one. So he was called as Abu Raham al Manhur. <coughs> In a rewaya by Dumyati, Dumyati is a alim. So Dumyati has narrated a rewaya that Prophet appointed Ibn Umm Maktoum. Got it? Now the page up is that one of them was a religious imam in masjid and the other one was political amir. Got it? Yeah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and sahaba, all of them, they were with fasting. A place, very well known place, we passed by also. That's called Qudayr. So in Qudayr, Prophet Sallallahu and Sahaba they did their iftar when they arrived in a place known by the name of Juhfa so there Abbas the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu along with his family they came and met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was the time when he expressed his Islam. When he was in a place known by the name of Abuwa in Maghazi, there is one Ghazwa that's called Ghazwa to Abuwa. Yes, Ghazwa to Abuwa. And Abawa is the place where, where the mother of the Prophet ﷺ passed away. And her cover was known there, I don't know anymore. That still that is known or not. But that was a known cover that it is the mother of the Prophet. ﷺ. And that was the time when Quraysh and Makkah were coming to Uhud. So passing by the grave of the mother of the Prophet. ﷺ, so Hind was very angry because her father, brother and uncle, all of them, they got killed there in Badr. She was very angry and that's why she joined the army. Yes. So the grave of the mother of the prophet, 
She intended to destroy it, but the elders stopped her. That number one, that is against our traditions. It's against our traditions. And number two, it will cause such an anger that then we will not be in control of. Yes. So anyhow, so it means that in Kufr also there were some characters. Now we in Islam are losing character. What is also? Yes. Hmm. A Persian poet said, Ken keda be rozgar az had baba lai gudasht. Got it? The changes in world that went beyond limits. Ken keda be rozgar az had baba lai gudasht. Barmakame burbulam zagani sahra hinashist. That where it was supposed that in the night angle, the night angle, they have to sit on that branch of tree. So there the crows are sitting. So it means that things are getting disturbed because of leaderships. Yes, and leadership is, or they are crows. We are looking for some night angle. And that is not found. Not. Right. So, Yana Baba, two cousins of the Prophet, one was the son of his uncle, father's brother. His name is Abu Sufyan ibn al Haris ibn Abdul Muttalib. Haris was the uncle of the Prophet. This Abu Sufyan was his first cousin. Abu Sufyan ibn al Haris. And the second one is, was his cousin, the son of his paternal auntie. The son of his paternal auntie. His name is Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah al Makhzumi. Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah al Makhzumi. So they came to accept Islam, but as they they both were showing arch enmity to the Prophet They were very hard in enmity with the Prophet, even though they were cousins. So when they came in front of the Prophet the Prophet turned his face. So they said that is too much. Otherwise, that was not the character of the Prophet He was not turning away his face from Kufar even. But these two cousins, when they came in front of him, Prophet Sallallahu turned his face. Got it? Yes. Because they both were saying bad words against the Prophet every time. And especially Abu Sufyan, he was a poet. So in poetry, he was saying things against the Prophet Sallallahu So Ms. Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was there. Ms. Abdullah ibn Abu Umayyah is uh, her brother from father, father's side. From what? From father's side. Because the mother of Umayyah Salama was not the same auntie as the Prophet But his auntie was married to the father of Umayyah Salama. So this Abdullah ibn Abu Umayyah was the son of that uh, auntie. So then Umayyah Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha she was there in the, in the army. So, she said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the only messenger of Allah, I don't want your both cousins to be unlucky people. If the messenger of Allah is turning away his face from them, so they will become at most unlucky people. Yes, they will go to hell. So, I don't want them. So Rasulullah sallallahu said, that Ms. Salama, you don't know what they were saying. Non-acceptance of Islam is one thing. But showing that type of enmity, that was way too much. Yes. Now, they were thinking, what to be done? They both were thinking, what should we do now? They then Prophet sallallahu alayhi turned his face. Nobody will approach him now because they saw him that he turned his face. 
So Abu Sufyan ibn al-Haris, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he came to Ali, his cousin, other cousin. So he said, Ali, what should we do? He said, look, in such a situation, we turned it, when he turned his face, nobody will approach him. If you will ask us, you will not. If you will ask Abu Bakr and Omar, they will not. Because all of us, we saw him. At the moment, he looked at you people, so he turned his face. So we know his attitude and we know his nature. So he said that anyway, he said, still the ways are here. So he said, what's the way? He said, don't approach anybody. Just go straight to him. Yes? And stand in, stop in front of him and just say what the brother of Yusuf said to him at that time when they came to Misr. Got it? He said, then you will see. So he came and he stopped in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Tallahi Laqad Aasaraka Allahu Alayna Wa in kunna la khatiheen Tallahi I swear by Allah Laqad Aasaraka Allahu Alayna Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given a high status to you upon us. Wa in kunna la khatiheen And for sure we were the people who were making Got it. So Sayyidina Ali, he told him that he is messenger of Allah, so he is a man of character. When his arch enemy admits in front of him that yes, I did wrong, so his whole anger goes down like Yes. So he said, Tallahi laqada asaraka Allahu alayna wa in kunna lakhati'im so the eye after that. This is the difference between Ramzani Hafiz and Shawani. Kala la tasri baale kumuliyon yafirullahu lakum wa wa arhamur rahimin. Yusuf said it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Because when Abdullah ibn Abu, Abu Sufyan ibn al-Haris, he said this tallahi laqad asarak Allah wa alayna wa in kunna. The khatiin, that's the ayah of Quran. When the brothers of Yusuf said to Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, he recited the following ayah. Sure. What Yusuf said to his brothers. That la tasri baale kumul yawm. Today there is no blame on you. La tasri baale kumul yawm. Yafirullahu lakum may Allah forgive you. And he is the utmost merciful and kind. So then they accepted what these two people then after Islam. Yes, the faithfulness and the wafa they showed that was example. We can say that they paid the kafara of their wrongdoing. They paid kafara. They never missed any expedition with the Prophet. And they used to be right in the front, yes, in the first row, in front of the swords and the arrows and every type of weapon, they used to be in the front. So somebody asked Abu Sufyan ibn al-Haris, you are putting yourself to very difficult thing. He said, yes, I have to, sure. because I have to pay the kafara what wrong I have done in my whole life. Got it? Yes. And then Abu Sufyan, as I told you, that he was a very well-known poet, good poet. So then he said a few verses. And he said, La amruka inni hina ahmilu rayatan Le taghleba khayl Allah te khaylu muhammadi Lakal muddejil khayrani azdama leiluhu fahaza awani hina ahdi fa'ahina uhda fa'adadi Hadani hadim ghaira nafsi wa dallani ala allahi man taradduhu kulla mutridi Asuddu wa an ajahidan wa an muhammadin wa udha wa lawlam antasib min muhammadi 
ഹിന്ദി <laughs> So it's translation, inshallah, tomorrow.